back off. Make her super look, she's already sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we're here today at the Furneaux Creek Nature Trail, which is in the uh, city of Carrollton. It is situated between Furneaux Creek and the Carrollton Blue Trail, uh, part of the Greenbelt Trail System. The Friends of Furneaux Creek have developed this nature trail with the support of the neighbors in the area and with the support of the Elm Fork Master Naturalist. They planted trees, they planted pollinator gardens, all to attract humans and animals and, uh, to the natural resources that are here. I'm Laura Kimberly, and I am a North Texas Master Naturalist and insect enthusiast. And I wanna talk about my favorite animals, of course, the insects. We're gonna see some beautiful flies, butterflies, dragonflies, bees, wasps, and some bugs, including a very important member of the insect community, the assassins. So here we Don't have- do it again, because I, I talked right over you. Third time's a charm. <laughs> you give me a you pointer with. Wasps are also an insect that you'll find in a pollinator garden. Here they're building their nest among the flowers. To build a nest, they gather water from the nearby creek and they come and find some decaying wood and they mix those two together to form a, a paper wasp. This is a type of paper wasp. It's called Hunter's Little Paper Wasp. Mm -hmm. They are a social wasp, meaning that they work collectively to um, build a nest with a, with a queen that lays the egg. What is he doing with his antenna in there? I'm, I'm looking at that, it's real interesting. When they build their nest, they use their antenna to measure, to make sure that all of the cells are precisely the right size. So you see them using their antenna. So as he's laying down new cellulose, he's kind of measuring, measuring how far it is from the next one over or something? Yeah, wow. that's how they that's keep so that cool. hexa hexagonal shape of each cell in the nest. Mm -hmm. What are they, they're young? Do they feed them something? They feed their young, a caterpillar. They lay an egg, they bring in a caterpillar before they seal off each, each cell. Nice, wow. So they also use water to um, cool the nest. They might go to the creek, collect water, bring it back, sort of spit it on the nest, and then fan it with their wings to, to cool it down on a hot day. So here we see one of these wasps gathering water, maybe to build, maybe to cool. At the water's edge, you might also see a solitary wasp, the mud dauber, gathering mud to build its nest. Or trying. Or trying. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> kind of fell over there. So they roll up mud and they carry it with their mandibles, part of their mouth parts, and their front legs back to the nest. Oh, look at them both at the same time here. Time to launch. That's really big. <laughs> I think, he, I think she kind of overdid it there. Yeah, barely got off the ground. Yeah. There's another pair. These aquatic insects are damselflies. This is a mating pair. She is on the leaf with her abdomen in the water, laying her eggs. He is um, attached to her guarding her to make sure that she is true only to him. So she's laid In other words, she doesn't cheat correct. with another guy while she's laying yeah. her eggs. I get it, okay. <laughs> she kind of moves around here. They move in tandem, flapping their wings together in tandem. And back to egg laying. And back to egg laying. And these damselflies are um, American ruby spot damselflies. They're just really, really pretty jewel-like insects, as their name would indicate. Oh yeah, of course. Hanging around the pond. Look at that. They catch mosquitoes. <laughs> nice. This lovely insect is a monarch butterfly. 
monarchs are famous for their long migration. They, uh, there's an adult generation that hangs out in Mexico for the winter, and when spring comes, they begin flying north. And they, when they get as far as northern Mexico or southern Texas, they begin laying eggs, and a new generation is born, and the old one dies off. The, this process continues over two or three generations until they reach uh, the northern United States and, and Canada. And then at the end of the summer, August, September time frame, that generation begins a long flight back to Mexico where they wow. will overwinter to beat the cold. So is it a nonstop? I don't mean for rest, but I mean they all have to end up in Mexico. Is that the goal? Like even if they're up in Canada, they've all got to get That down. is the goal. Okay. Um, some of them do not make it. You'll see a lot of ragtag monarchs uh, in Texas in the fall. You'll see them oh, missing yeah. parts of He's wings a little beat or, up. or scales. And, um, but th th they will, uh, many of them will make it. Oh, nice. Well, that's a great story. Thank you. A butterfly in the same genus as the monarch is the queen butterfly. These are both milkweed butterflies, meaning that the larva, in the larval stage, they feed on milkweed. Milkweed is a plant that is poisonous to m many other animals, but these butterflies have um, figured out how to use it as a food source and as a source of protection because it's once it's in their system and a bird or other animal tries to catch this, it will be bitter tasting and, and they will not, not eat it. The queen and the monarch butterflies have protection from the toxins in the milkweed. This butterfly is a viceroy. The viceroy's protection comes from looking like a monarch. Its host plant is the willow, so it doesn't have the toxins, but it is protected. All right, we've been talking about host plants, but actually none of these butterflies are on their host plant. That is their food source as in the larval stage. As adults, they sip nectar, furling and unfurling their proboscis, dipping it into flowers, and getting sugary energy. And these small skippers, a different variety of butterflies, you can see that mouth part at work. We've been looking at the very beautiful and delicate butterflies, and we're moving now to uh, quite a different insect. These are the assassin bugs. And here we see a bee assassin bug eating on a honeybee. They have a similar mouth part to butterflies, and it's, it's called a proboscis. It's, it's a, a long um, sipping mouth part but they use it to pierce their prey and then they inject an enzyme that liquefies the insides and then they can suck it out and that's how they get their food. So this bug is a predator, is that right? Yes, it is. Look at his eyes. To me, he's saying, don't judge me. <laughs> And just like there's a variety of butterflies, there are a variety of assassin bugs. And here we see a, a small a pale green assassin bug also lurking in the leaves, waiting for his meal to fly or crawl by. And here's an insect that you might really think is a predator, and this is one of the assassin bugs. It's called a wheel bug because of that um, wheel-looking structure on his thorax. Wow, look at the back end of that thing. It looks jeweled. What is that? So this is another characteristic of the bug 
group of insects. Their outer wings are hardened on the top part, mm -hmm. but they're membranous on the bottom part. More like you would see on a fly or a bee. So is it the dark part that is the membranous part, like the, that we see there? Yeah, the part that appears dark here on this side view, yes. Okay, wow, okay, great. Unlike the assassins, this true bug feeds on plant juices. It's a leaf-footed bug named for the shape of its hind legs and a nymph still acquiring its wings. You can also see that membranous wing on this shield bug. It's interesting also because this shield bug has two little mites perfectly placed in the middle of its shield on its back, just carrying them around. I thought that was like part of his design. He's got the cool shoulder spikes and I thought that was like an accessory or something. I'm just fooling you. <laughs> okay. And do these, is this thing, do they spray? Like if you harass him, do you know? Yes, they have a stinky smell, which some people can smell and some people can't. This enthusiastic pollinator is a soldier fly named for the green color of his thorax and abdomen. Doesn't he look like a pistachio? <laughs> no, maybe a, like a mint in a Mexican restaurant. Another pollinating fly, you may think it's a bee, but it's a very good mimic. This is one of the hoverflies, which as an adult is eating nectar and picking up the pollen you see on the very end of its tail. But in the larval stage, it eats other insects, including aphids, such as these goldenrod aphids. But aphids have a lot of defense mechanisms, such as this twitching, living in colonies, and secreting defensive fluid from their tailpipes. Back to the pollinators. This is the Hawaiian beet webworm moth, named for one of its larval food, food sources turnips? Let's go with beets. Hmm? Okay. Wow. Um, and then they might also get water on a hot